Let's see. I got to get organized. Oh, wait. I already turned this on. Hi. Yes. Welcome again to the Hobo and His Girlfriend Wrestling Podcast. My name is Hobo Tom. My girlfriend is out while doing stuff. She was doing a bunch of photography stuff. You know, I'm a hobo. I don't know what photography stuff is. I watch pro wrestling. And I would like to thank, I have a whole bunch of thanks. First of all, I would like to thank all those who have liked, shared, commented, and even more important, su subscribed. Also, you can feel free to always leave a email at hoboandgirlfriend at gmail.com. It's always much appreciative. Um, I have to kind of have a whole bunch of notes because for right now, uh, I just watched. Oh, I forgot what it was. Um, Impact Show, Bound for Glory. That's it. And even though I could not do a live stream, which I feel bad about, but I have, I'm still on my seven, my yeah, seventy something odd suspension for doing bad stuff. Not for drinking on YouTube. But I try to get away with stuff. Or actually, last time, my, my last suspension, thought it was okay, but obviously not. So I have to, wow. I have a whole bunch of notes. And of course, because wrestling fans are really the best fans. I think I've said this a couple times, but whenever you meet just a pure wrestling fan, they're always a joy to talk to. And I think it's just because there's almost like a kindred relationship between all wrestling fans. You may not like the same people. You may not hate the same people. But you know what? You can talk about it. And it's not a, it's not a life-changing event. You can have a discussion. And some of the best some of the best wrestling fans are gonna say, Yeah, this guy's good. And you can say, No, he's not. He's that? It's like, oh, let me say, yeah. I mean, it's, it's an opinion. So again, it's wrestling fans are amazing like that. So therefore, especially if you talk to Hobo Tom, you'll get a shout out on my channel. And I might even tell people to subscribe to your channel too. That would be amazing. So let's start out. First, with the six count of the night, live knuckle shuffle, you definitely get a six count. Thank you for figuring out ways to live stream. Yeah. The show for impact. Thank you very much. Live knuckle shuffle again. Like, share, comment, and subscribe to his channel. Um, this video, the six count, goes out for you.
Also, I'm not done yet. Again, while watching, I had some good conversations, again, with some very good and probably pretty knowledgeable wrestling fans. If they weren't knowledgeable, they at least seemed it. And were pleasant. It made watching Impact Wrestling a little bit more enjoyable. So Steve Brock, this gif of you're my tag team partner goes out to you. And finally, Bum Slicks. I like that name. Bum Slicks, he has his own YouTube channel. Again, please like, share, comment, and subscribe to Bum Slicks' page. A lot of good dubstep music. I can appreciate that. Right now, I know I'm sending my girlfriend a whole bunch of dubstep Halloween music, which is actually really good. I don't know if Bum Slicks does anything like that. Hey, check out his channel, and you'll be in the know. So, Bum Slicks, this martial art exposition goes out to you. And with all that said and done, let's talk about some Bound for Glory, which I think is the second time I've done an Impact review. I think the first one I did was Slammiversary. I think that was my very first live stream. Yeah, after my first suspension. And I've had bad luck with WWE and Mixed Max challenges. They're, 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 I don't know. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. I had a yummy breakfast tonight. I had some sausage, egg, cheese, and potato burritos. Of course, my drink of choice is a semi Miami sunset. Although I had no grand deal. Again, it's a very yummy drink. Especially the way you make it with orange soda instead of orange juice. It was on a lot smoother. Well, let's talk about some Impact Wrestling. From a very small sample size, mainly two pay-per-views I've managed to catch from them, they put on an interesting product. I won't say it's bad. I won't say it's the best either, though. I think they suffer from a weird match order where they have a good match to begin with. And then from there, it bunches so so matches. And then when they get to the middle of the card, it's, it's this amazing thing. So you kind of like wake up. And then they always seem to end on a little bit of a, I won't say downer. 
but a low though. Because the last couple matches or the last main events were so so. This one was a little bit better. But again, I think it just suffers a little bit from match timing, pacing. And for some reason, this just felt like a long TV show. And I think it was because promos between matches were so long. I mean, the, the match itself might be good. Then you find yourself playing Candy Crush between matches. Because it's promo package after promo package. And I understand a little bit why they do that. Because people may not be as informed about the Impact product as, say, WWE. But they don't have to be that long. Probably if they had a pre-show and not just a YouTube pre-show, but literally, like, just... They could have a couple guests talk about a wrestling show along with a regular announcing crew. And it would probably serve the same purpose and probably take up just as much time as the promos did. Because some of them were really long and there was a whole videotape segment. I understand why they had to kind of reset the ring. But it, it just seemed long and it really didn't seem like a wrestling match, more like two people trying to kill each other with a watch, watch live murder or murder of a soul on pay per view. So, with all that being said, it was, it was an okay show. I mean, it's a Sunday night, nothing's going on. I think. The only thing is, this might actually be better than Evolution might be. And I think the only reason I say that is because I do have a bias against the Bellas. Never enjoyed the Bellas. And I think they're part of the reason why I stopped watching wrestling for a while. And then they have a whole bunch of... Well, they have Lita and Trish Stratus coming back. They have that kind of Legends moment, I guess. Trish Stratus was good. I always thought Lita was better. I'm trying to think of Trish. Trish had some odd matches, too. Again, once is, it's okay. Once is a novelty. When it's the same kind of match over and over and over again. Uh. So well, let's talk about this. So Bound for Glory started off actually kind of hot with Matt Seidel and Ethan Page versus former WWE star Rich Swan and one of my favorite wrestlers from Lucha Underground, Willie Mack. And Lucha Underground just very known simply as the Mack, the brother of Big Rick. Um. That got a huge pop. I mean, even the announcer. And I don't know what kind of relationship Lucha Underground has with Impact. I know Lucha Underground does its tapings like months ahead of they actually air. So I don't know if there's like a, a talent share between the two of them. Uh, it, it might be that way. I know. Impact in the past has acquired the talent or that's what I want to use. They acquired well at least they had people from NOAA, Pro Wrestling NOAA, and New Japan show up. So there is a and and, and sometimes Ring of Honor. So they do have have some of those relationships. I think more so with AAA and I always got this confused. I think it's like MLW. It's, it's the other 
Lucha prom- the other big prom- Lucha wrestling promotion. I think it's MLW. Again, feel free to leave a comment that you're wrong. I know a lot of stuff. I don't know everything, though. But again, you can only say I'm wrong. And I'll say, oh, I'm sorry. Or if it's MWL. If I'm getting letters confused. That's okay. But more about this match. Again, Lucha Underground has some good-looking merch. Uh, the mat came out with shirt with a, with a skull and a half row on it. Yeah, it looked really good, and it had that that lucha feel to it too, which was pretty good. Uh, Ethan Page is actually a really strong wrestler. Uh, he shows up in the ring. Um, Page and Seidel they go th- they have, go through the classic tag team moves: um, the axe hand, the double axe handle to an outstretched arm of Rich Swan. Um, again, they isolate Rich Swan a lot, especially in, in their half of the ring. Again, kind of classic tag team tactics. Oh, what did they say? It was a tag team something. Maybe one day I'll be able to re- read my own handwriting. Yeah, it was really good though. Um, I think the, the ring was set up kind of odd. I do like that they have the ramp going right to the ring. That's, I'm fine with that. But there are parts of the ring that was a really small space between the ring and the barricade. Which is great for the crowd. I don't know how good it is for the wrestlers though. Um, Seidel, he like went under the ring and attacked Swan. Oh, that was pretty cool. Well, this is different. And I, I'll appreciate when wrestlers do different things. But Mac is just awesome. I mean, he does a senton from the ring apron to the floor. Um, Max, Mac finally does get the hot tag in. Oh, he's, he's, a, he's a black stone cold. Flashes double birds. Dishes out stunners. I don't want to curse too much because my girlfriend doesn't like it when I curse on YouTube. Because she actually watches it. And so does her family. So I have to keep it clean, but you know what I mean when it's a double bird. Or less single bird. This is saying, you're number one in my book. And it's not this finger either, folks. So again, this really classic tag team action. And then there's always a tag team miscue. Um, let's say... Ethan Page, I think, held up Rich Swan, which Rich Swan ducks his head when Matt Seidel went for a kick. So Ethan Page ate a kick from him. Uh, it was. I mean, I was surprised that Rich Swan got the pin. Because I think if Willie Mack got the pin instead, that would have been a huge pop. But nonetheless, this this it was a good match. It wasn't anything great. I mean, for an opening match with all these wrestlers involved, it was a good classic cheeseburger match. Then we go to... Again, I, I, I stopped writing about some of these promos. Johnny Mundo was on TMZ. And it's always interesting, the fact that Johnny Mundo gets on TMZ, he gets to actually promote himself, and of course promotes his food with Austin Aries, which I think Austin Aries called, called Ty of Fat, and Austin Aries is, is a real jerk for saying that. Because, I mean, Ty of Valkyrie just looks healthy. That's good. Because I know, you can always say, I don't like my, I don't think I've ever liked skinny women. It's always weird to see like a woman's like, Bones and stuff. I don't want to see a woman who has more muscular density than I do. It's just weird. Ugh. Um, we like the that whenever the WWE gets on TMZ, it's always some. Most of the time, it's for something bad. Um, a wrestler gets involved with something. 
Sometimes it's good. I know John, John Cena has been on TMZ a couple times, I think, for his work with used to be Nickelodeon and the Kids' Choice Awards. Um, it just seems like TMZ has so much negative press associated with it. I mean, for Impact, it just, it just seems good. Like they're getting impacts getting out to the mainstream audience, which is what they would need. Um, so what's wrong with that? Then I was never a fan of Austin Aries though. He he's a good wrestler. Nothing terrific or out of the ordinary. Then we got to the second match. And for some reason there's a lot of open challenges. In every wrestling promotion, the U.S. Open Challenge by John Cena, I think, was kind of special because it was unique. It was, I want to say it was the first one at the time. Um, I know in New Japan, they, they do have challenges where someone will come and throw in challenge for a belt, and they'll say, I challenge you. Or, I'm going to take that belt from you. I challenge you to a match at, at destruction or something. Not not so much um King of Pro Wrestling. Maybe it is King of Pro Wrestling. I forget what their big show is now. Wrestle Kingdom. Not so much Wrestle Kingdom, that's already set. But like King of Pro Wrestling, Dominion, um, Destruction. They have a few other major shows and pay per views with all the challenge. But I think every promotion now is an open challenge. And it kind of seems like it's watered down. So when Eli Drake comes out and has a New York City Open Challenge, starts to run down the city of New York, which is great. So the best thing about New York is it's pizza. I think the best thing about New York City was it's bagels and cream cheese. Hey, we disagree about something. Let me know in the comments what you think the best thing about NYC is. I think I liked it, again, for the bagels and cream cheese. Every corner had its own little deli. Still the best bagels and cream cheese ever. Some of the better, more well-known nightclubs were also very good. Don't go to those shady ones. No. Um, what else was good about New York? A few other things. So this is a, I lived in New York for two years. It's a nice place to visit for like a weekend. For day, not for two years. Wouldn't necessarily do that. So again, he, he calls out. He says the, the New York. He does the classic heel, heel on the local sports teams. He says, yeah, what's it like being one in five, you New York Giants? And I'm a Redskins fan. I can't say much, but I can say my red, my Washington Redskins are better than those New York Giants. Um, then James Ellsworth shows up. I I think he is from upstate New York. I think not really New York City. Oh, and then Eli Drake got a pizza. He mentioned New York City pizza is the best. He got a pizza, pizza, pizza. Um, James Ellsworth did reference that he did date a girl from. From Staten Island, who was a Staten Island princess. Um, in this show, there's a whole bunch of like funny jabs of WWE, which is kind of cool. Uh, <laughs> when he did mention his days in WWE, he got an FU, FU Ellsworth by the crowd. Um, he was trying to go for the face pop. Again, there's a reference to sweet chin music as no chin music. I might have had no chin, but you have no balls. Hey, listen, whatever whatever work you can get from WWE is good for him. It was a hot crowd, though. Um, once he said, I might have no chin, but you have no balls. <laughs> it was a hot crowd. They were chanting balls, 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 balls. Um, Ellsworth, again, he has some good moves. I mean, he's a competent indie wrestler. It was a quick match. Eli Drake won. And this in itself was a can of soup.
Again, nothing really special. And that's kind of the way that went. But that led to actually a second match with the same wrestler. And I have to take a little break because my little video thing can only do about 20, 25 minutes. So here's a little break. Oh, I'm back. Okay. So then, again, Eli Drake continues to run down. He watches the Stephen Larson show. <laughs> he asks for top-notch challenge, challenger. I should have made a video of that quickly. That happened to click on someone else's webpage. But that was funny, though. Like, top-notch, super best from Fun Wrestling, from Stephen Larson. Someone watches the YouTube. Um, and then he, of course, did, did did the dumb thing. He called out Abyss, who just retired. Um, maybe this sets up for something further. Maybe it sets up for their next match or series of matches or the next pay-per-view. There's a table spot. And, of course, Eli Drake, being the heel in this, goes to the, ta he goes to the table where the Abyss is the face. And it was okay. Um, overall, it just seemed... Really like a glorified TV show. But I might be looking too much into it. Again, the mash itself was a can of soup. It was okay. Could have done without it. He could have had a match with the best and it probably would have been better. Then we go to Taya Valkyrie versus Tess Blanchard. <laughs> Tess has a good butt wiggle. Taya, Taya's good. I mean, she shows off a lot of Lucia skills. Her time in AAA, MLA, or MLW really shows, and she's really developing between this and, Lucha, and th those two promotions and Lucha Underground. She's good. Um, when they were in the match, for the most part, Taya had really had the upper hand. When it went to the outside, Tess Blanchard had, had the upper hand. And Tess Blanchard, the daughter of Tully Blanchard. And I know her grandfather also wrestled too because she's a third generation wrestler. But I mean, it was, it was a fun match. It was most, mostly, it was really good technical wrestling. Um, they were, they traded some forearms. I mean, Ty has a whole bunch of moves that, that she bursts out with. And it's fun because it shows that the wrestlers, really on the indie scene, they're not unidimensional. They have a lot of more dimension. They have a lot more and can bring out things, I guess maybe for the bigger shows. But if you see a WWE match, I mean, there's the classic five or six moves of Doom, um, the classic pops. But for the ooh ah, and then the spear. Spear is probably the ultimate finisher. Um, what else? There's always dodging the last yes kick, and and just things like that. That that, that, that seems really pre-programmed. Well, in the indies, it seems a lot more organic, a lot more. I don't know, a lot more fun, a lot more free flowing, I guess. Um, there was a rough spot. Ty hit her finisher. He was trying to fix the ring. This rough wasn't that good. I mean, I think a couple times, I know in this match, I think in another match, he, his hand hit for the three count. The no, 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 two. The whole crowd's going three, three, three. But again, th this was a really good match. Again, that being said, it's a cheeseburger match. And if you've ever seen my scale, um, again, the toast is the worst match. I've only seen a few toast matches. There, there's. 
A can of soups. Uh, ham sandwich. Hey, it's a ham sandwich. It's good. Cheeseburgers next. Yeah, and who doesn't like a good cheeseburger? Then, of course, you go to the Surf and Turf. Well, Austin Aries might not, but that's whatever. Then, of course, you have filet mignon. Well, the best of the best. Again, another long promo. Um, then you had, you had Moose versus Eddie Edwards. And this ended. And the death is finished, baby. I think it's about two and a half minutes. You know what that means? If it's a death to finish in two and a half minutes with uh, someone interfering, you're going to get a piece of toast. Um, Tommy Dreamer then showed up. And then, of course, once Tommy Dreamer showed up, Tommy Dreamer is from New York. Not from New York City so much, but I think, again, upstate New York somewhere. Sure, it's upstate or middle New York. But I, I know he is a New York native. And he showed up. There were ECW chance galore. Um, oh, we were talking during the, the one uh, live stream I was watching about how it felt. A couple people said felt like a host, like a like an NXT show. Um, I think my comment was if, if, how to feel for an, for a big ECW show. Um, probably maybe something from like Raw from the real early 90s, late 80s. It had kind of a house show feel. Feelish. Um, it's a smaller, more intimate venue. Almost like an indie show, but just a little bit bigger than that. Again, to me, it felt like an ECW show. About an ECW crowd, ECW arena size. So again, Tommy Dreamer comes out. Oh, I forget what he did outside, but... Oh, because cause then we had a new match. So we had, like, kind of two impromptu matches. Part. So we had Moose and Killer Cross versus Eddie Edwards and Tommy Dreamer. Moose is still so strong. Moose is huge, too. I never realized he it was that big. Killer Cross, I mean, for the most part, most of this match was really a glorified brawl. Moose also got in the face of some giant fans. Um, the crowd, the crowd, I don't know what Tommy Dreamer did, but the crowd started chanting, you sick F. And for some reason, they were shouting, this is wrestling. It was just like a brawl. There were good traded chops, though, between Eddie Edwards and Moose, who was, yay, Moose, yay, Moose. It was actually really good. I mean, I do applaud the crowd for being creative with their chants. At least they're not going, yay, boo, yay, boo. So they did kind of mix it up. Um, it probably was more lively for them, but it, it, it just it just showed that they were into it though. Because if you have a dead crowd, trying to watch a, a wrestling match with a dead crowd, that's a real slog. Again, the kendo stick came into play. Again, Tom, Tom Eddie Edwards and Tommy Dreamer won by a schoolboy roll up. So, I, this was okay. I mean, this match was a ham sandwich match. I mean, after there was you know, the, the typical heel after match beatdown. Then, again, the promos pulled the show. Oh, I know. Like that's what my side note says. Yes, one day I'll I'll show you my notes, folks. Kind of all my notes about about wrestling and stuff. And actually, I go back to my freeze and 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 see see what I actually predicted right. But 
for that woman in the crowd who tried to high five the camera. This high five is for you. <laughs> you tried. You definitely gave it a try. So I'll say, ah, there we go. There's your high five, lady. You deserve that. Um, so the next match, we had uh, Ohio versus everyone. You have the Chris brothers and Sammy Callahan versus Brian Cage and the Lucia brothers, Phoenix and Pentagon Jr. This was the match of the night. I'll give no qualms about that. I, if you are a amazing match, I will say you are an amazing match. If you are a bad match, however, I will also say that was a bad match. But this match was amazing. This was probably the match of the night. And I think what made it really fun is that the one under <laughs> that kind of lucha tag team rules, where whichever two guys were in the ring were the legal people, and everyone else was on the outside. Um, it started off amazing. All three trade, all six men trade blows with each other. Uh, I guess this is like a Ohio street fight, which which is I guess like a lucha tag rules. Because in lucha tag you don't necessarily have to tag; you just kind of roll out of the ring, and the next guy jumps in. So it's really fun, really good, fast pace. Phoenix is so freaking fast; he can jump from middle rope to top rope, from middle rope again, and do flippy stuff. Did like a spring headbutt. That was awesome. And that head spring head headbutt was a spot too. It wasn't a botch. Again, all six of the men got the got their got their things in. Um there are so many false finishes. Every time someone went for a pin, someone else say, made the save. Sometimes both both other members made the save. I mean you had a, a package Meltzer driver. That was awesome. Uh, Cage, Cage tossed one of the Chris brothers. I always forget which one of the Chris brothers is who. I think I'm just figuring out who the Jacksons are. It's just Nick and Matt Jackson. I think Matt is the older one who has the bad back. Nick is the younger one. I still have to figure out who the which Chris is which Chris. But Cage tossed Chris like a ragdoll slam, like over his head into like everyone. It was just awesome. Brian Cage is a pure beast. He's pure muscle. If I was him, I would do nothing but probably walk around town wearing boxer briefs and just say, Phew. yeah, there's my muscle. All my muscle. Again, break after break. I mean, eventually, there was a couple double teams. There was a freaking super kick party on poor Brian Cage. Cage gets double team, and that's what it really should take to, to to take down a guy like Cage. So it made sense, even though it was just one guy. It made sense that they had to do all this just to one guy, especially knowing his size. And it just made sense. Something in wrestling made sense. I mean, it had a super kick party that the Young Bucks would have been proud of. Uh, again, it's just... This was the filet mignon match of the night. I think... And I'll pose this question out to everyone. I wonder if I should make a poll. Um, I've seen Ohio versus everyone a couple times. Is it just me, or do they seem to be the poor man's sanity? Minus Nikki Cross. Or if they got... Well, Rosemary was already with the K. If they picked up... Ruby or uh, Heidi Lovelace says, who else, who else, who's in the Indies from the Midwest? Kimberly's in Washington State. If they had one female member, that would probably make them cl closer comparison to Sanity. 
They just seem like a the poor man's Sandy minus Nikki Cross. And thankfully, Nikki Cross isn't with Sandy anymore because where's Sandy at? They on main, main event are superstars. So good with Sandy. So good with sanity and so buried with sanity. Then, oh, they did mention the Chris Jericho cruise. They were really extended promo when they kind of took the ring apart, showed the bare boards, um, took away the turnbuckle pads because we had LAX versus the OGs in a concrete street brawl or something like that. Con Concrete street street fight. Something like that. It was glorified gang warfare. Um, this was also a really fun match. I mean, they come out in Wu-Tang shirts as a rap performance. My fear was that the rap performance might be longer than the match, but I was wrong. This really felt like an old-school ECW match. Minus New Jack. Because Hernandez got busted open pretty early. But, oh, that was cursing in this match. I'm like, am I watching Impact or is this New Japan pro wrestling? I mean, this was fun, though. Everyone kind of got their spots in. There were good use of, of weapons and, well, say foreign objects. Um, this was amazingly fun, though. And then Conan shows up. This was again. This this if if the previous match didn't do it for you, this match did because this only because I think it just seemed like a street fight. This was a good surf and turf quality match. And it was fun. And then when they were putting the ring together, there was an Alley versus Sue Young videotape axe murdering save my soul match in a coffin with a sawed out bottom. It was okay. I mean, you can tell by my, it was okay. It was a can of soup. And again, I don't know. Impact's done some good, fun, creative things. The whole broken universe was, the Hardy compound was amaz amazing. Um, tag Team Apocalypto. Uh, what was the other match? Was with Delete or Decay? Uh, Delete or Decay was fun. This just seemed overproduced. I guess the fact that they're wheeling axes and kind of lost me a little bit. I can see if it was a video package that led up to a match. That would have been better. But eh. And this led us to the main event of the evening for the Impact Championship of the World. The challenger coming in from Slamtown, Slamville, USA. Johnny Impact. Versus. The champion, Austin Aries. Ready? Fight! Um, it was pretty good. Johnny Impact, I mean, he, he, has, he has every kind of wrestling skill available. He started off really kind of in this match in really a collegiate style, a freestyle. Um, Austin Aries resorted to look at the heel tactics. And, I mean, it was a good match. Um, Johnny, 
Jeez, he's so good. I mean, he's such a good face wrestler. He could be a heel. He could be a tweener. He could be anything he needs to be, especially in that moment. Um, Austin Aries is your typical heel. And even for a heel wrestler, the heel promoter calls Austin Aries a piece of trash. Um, there was a, a, a top rope Spanish fly. Oh, so amazing. Um, and then it was, it was pretty good, though. It was, a, it was a good match. Again, false finishes. Ty Valkyrie got involved. I think Austin Aries went out to take, take out Ty Valkyrie. I mean, th it was a fun match. It wasn't the best night of the match. This was a quality cheeseburger match. So, I mean, overall, there, there were some high points. There were some low points. Though the crowd seemed really excited about stuff. The fact that the crowd was excited about things, hey, it even got me at home a little bit more excited. So, I'm like, hey, if they're into it, I'll be into it, too. So, again, I'd like to thank everyone for watching. And this was a very quick review of Impact Bound for Glory. It, it, was, a fun, it was a fun show. I mean, it wasn't... Anything spectacular, really? Again, they had their high points, they had their low points. But it was a fun card. So it's kind of hard to complain about it. Well, my name is Hobo Tom, and I'd like to thank you for watching the Hobo and his Girlfriend Wrestling Podcast. Eventually, my girlfriend will be back here in this chair somewhere, or maybe on that couch. Couch while I'm watching wrestling. You can see her, and you can know, always interact with us through Gmail. You can email us at hobo and gmail. Hobo and girlfriend at gmail.com. Also, feel free to like, share, comment, and subscribe. Again, I'd like to thank all of those who I made the dedications to, and I'll shout out them one more time as I go to my notes. Let's see here, where is it? Steve Brock, thank you very much. You saw your video. Bum Slicks, again, thank you very much. It was fun talking with you guys. Thank you very much. Live Knuckle Shuffle. Oh, another important part of the show. Let's talk about how I did. So earlier today I made some predictions. And I posted those predictions. In here. There, there we go. I can figure that out. So let's see how I did. These were in no particular order. LAX, I chose to go over the OGs. Got one right. I wow. I chose Johnny Impact to go over Austin Aries. Dos correctes. I chose OVE to go over Lucha Underground of Phoenix. Pentagon Jr. In the you can actually see that right there. So there we go. Look at that. OVE. Wow. wow. They are circled. I guess that, that gets a check. Well, the one I got wrong was Eddie Edwards and Moose. Eddie Edwards by DQ. Another one I got wrong was Ty Valkyrie. Lost a Tesla Blanchard. Tesla retained. Let's see. So I have one, two, three. I did get Rich Swan and Willie Mack correct. Mainly because I said they're not going to have Willie Mack lose. Four. Ooh. Quattro. Ali versus Su Young. I have no idea. Drake versus Mystery Opponent. Got that wrong too. Wow. So I had four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. For fifty percent. 
<laughs> oh wait. You know what that means? I am a 50, 50 WWE. I am a 50, 50 WWE booker. I don't think that's a good thing. Again, I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Hopefully this video will go up. Um, probably not tonight because I have to go through the whole editing process. It'll probably be up tomorrow morning. I'd like to thank everyone for watching again. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe. Again, if you ever leave, leave a comment or an email, something always happens for you on our web on well, I say our web channel. And again, it's always something good. That's uh, something lighthearted, something fun. You get a shout out and a video in your dedication. Thank everyone for watching. Everyone have a good day, I guess. By the time I put this up. Take care. Bye.